Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick tutorial on setting up your own pod culture from scratch. There's so many ways you can do it, so we're going to just start with the basics. So you, first step is you need a container. You can use these jugs, you can get them at Walmart, they're glass. Um, you can use plastic um, Tupperware containers or reused, cleaned out uh, plastic containers from like food. Um, you can get these two gallon buckets at um, Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, you can do five gallon buckets, depends on your culture. I, I suggest starting out small um, because usually when you get your first pod culture in, you have to buy them and it's a small quantity so you really just don't need that much water. Uh, secondly, you need um, salt water. You can use your fresh salt water made, you can buy it from the store, you can use your old tank water. You just want to match the salinity to the tank that you're going to be putting it into. Um, and then a phytoplankton. I use phytofeast uh, personally, but really any live phytoplankton, that's the key there, is that it needs to be live. And then your copepod. So you want to um, put the water in, um, put the phytoplankton in so it turns a nice green color. This is actually a container that held protein powder. Um, and that's really it for starting off. You, I recommend using a bubbler. Um, and do one to two bubbles per second. They don't really need it, but I find that it helps the uh, phytoplankton to stay suspended. And you can use valves to um, lower the, the flow or just tie knots into your uh, airline tubing so that it slows down the flow. Um, that's it for basics. Temperature, you can keep it at room temperature. You can put it in a heater to put it at 77, 78. Um, but they're fine at room temperature if you're keeping them inside. I keep them on my window, or my window on a desk next to my window, should I say. Uh, some people like to feed, I don't even know how to pronounce it, spirulina. No, I'm not even sure. Um, I tried it, it makes my house stink like sewer. If you're doing it outside, I recommend it but inside not so much. Um, you can use a cheap little heater. Um, I have one in one of my buckets, but not the other ones. They're actually they're doing great without it. Um, a sieve, depending on what kind of copods or amphipods that you are setting up, you want to use, get a screen that when you do water changes, and there's another video on that catching um, the pods and you can discard the water. The micron size depends again on your pod. Um, bigger ones like this one will catch amphipods, adult pods, where the 50 micron net that I've got in here will catch the Tisby, spalls, Tisby pods, which are much more smaller. Um, you can use macroalgae. Uh, Chato is a, a common one to put in. It, it helps the pods hide inside the, uh, the water and um, lay their eggs and feel comforted. You can use filter floss. I recommend actually using the filter floss that you have inside your tank that you've used and actually just putting in there. It has a lot of waste in it that the pods will eat out of and again they'll house inside of it. Um, really that's about it. Um, you can put some live rock rubble. You can do a substrate if you like. I prefer just to go easy with um, just the water and phytoplankton honestly I do have one bottle that has filter floss in it and then I have another container that I'm actually growing the macroalgae in with my pods um, but I find that it's, it's a lot harder to clean up after but teach your own it, it provides definitely benefits to having them in um, I'm gonna do a video and show you my pod, my pod cultures and what I've got in them. So right we're now. gonna start off with this two gallon bucket that I've got here. I've got a little grow light on it because I do have um, some dragon's breath and macroalgae. You can see my bubbles there and I have a little heater. I doubt you'll be able to see too much in there but there's some live rock in there and um, my phytoplankton, that's why it's green, with my pods. And then I have this little um, I don't know, not probably not even a gallon little container and it's got some filter floss in there. I raise Tisby pods so they're a lot smaller than what you would normally see when you look at these videos. And then I have the small Tupperware container. 
And this is actually just filled with the detritus and the fallen um, algae when I do my water changes from these two tanks. I did have this one set up, I had two of these set up actually, but I found that I was just using way too much water for how many pods I had and it just, it didn't necessarily make sense to me. So I switched to the plastic since I've been seeing great growth in those. All right, well, I hope you guys found all of that information helpful. I will be doing more videos. Uh, it'd help me a lot if you'd subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing some unboxing videos um, today, tomorrow, next week of uh, some pods, cocoa pods and antipods that I'm actually getting from different uh, retailers that sell them in the U.S. and gonna help them out with um, showing their product and showcasing them. Um, and I'm gonna do another video on growing your own algae, uh, a journal, so that's actually gonna take me a while. Um, and if there's anything else that you guys like to see or have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.